right, so today we're going to look at cross product and some applications of cross product. And when we use it, then it's different than when we are going to use the dot product. So our applications for cross product are finding the equation of a plane given three points. Now the other day we looked at the other way of getting the equation of a plane, which is one point and the normal vector. And so we're going to use that again today. We're going to use cross product to find a perpendicular or normal vector and then use one of our points. Um, we're going to calculate the area of a parallelogram of a triangle or a triangle. And we're going to determine the vector parallel to the intersection of two planes. So all of these things are going to ask us to use the cross product. So first we're going to find the equation of a plane through these points. And I'm just going to pick the points. I'm going to put them sort of anywhere. If this is A and this is B, and this is C. What I want to do is find two vectors in my plane, and I want them to be tail to tail. And I'm going to cross them, because that's going to give me a vector normal to the plane that contains these three points. And again, you can make any choice you want of the two vectors to cross, but they both need to start at the same um, point. Uh, so we're gonna, I'm going to cross these first, and we're going to try it with another point, and we should get the same thing. So the displacement vector from B to A, if I were to start at 1 in my I right here and go to 0, that's going to take me um, negative 1 unit in the I direction. From negative 1 to 0, I go positive 1 in the J direction. And then from 2 to 3, I'm going to go... Um, negative 1, and then from 2 to 3 is also going to be positive 1. So I have that vector for BA of negative 1, 1, and I'm going to put that in my matrix, because that's how I'm going to do my cross product. And then BC from 1 to 5 is 4 units, right? This is going to be right here, 4 units from negative 1 to 0 is a positive 1 unit, and then from 2 to 5, or 7, is 5 units. So that's my other row. And now we do our cross product. Um, again, to find the I component, I'm going to cross out these, and I'm going to use my determinant idea, like so, and I'm going to get 5 minus 1. And so I have 4I. And then I'm going to take the opposite, right, of um, when I cross out this row of this determinant. And this, de this determinant is negative 5 minus 4, so negative 9. But I'm going to take the opposite of that, so that gives me a plus 9j. And then when I move this over, my last determinant is a plus, and I'm going to get negative 1 minus 4, negative 5. Okay, so that's the normal vector to the plane that contains the points A, B, and C. Now, my equation of my plane then is 4x plus 9y minus 5z equals some constant d. And to find my um, constant, I can use any point I want. Well, the easiest point to use is the point with the most zeros, which is A. So when x is 0 and y is 0, and z is 3, that's going to get me my d, which turns out to be negative 15. So the equation of my plane is 4x plus 9y minus 5z is negative 15. And just to show that it doesn't matter which points you use, I can do the same or which vectors you use. If instead I use a, b and cross it with a, C, I should get the same equation. Um, a, B is basically in the opposite direction to B, A. And so going from A to B, I go forward one, and then backward one, and then backward one. And from A to C, I go forward five, and then I go forward zero, or, you know, that direction is zero. And then I go from three to four, or three to seven is four. And again, when I do my cross product with my determinants, I get negative 4 minus negative 1 in the i direction. Ooh, wait, that's not right. It's negative 4 minus 0. 
So we'll have a negative 4 in the i direction. We will have the opposite of 4 minus negative 5, which is 9, in the k direction. And then we will have uh, 0 minus negative 5, or 5. Oops, this is my j back here, and this is my k. So the equation of the line here, the normal vector, is negative 4 in the x direction, negative 9 in the y direction, and 5k is d, and again with my point 0, 0, 3. I know that d in this case is 15. And so I get this equation, which is negative 4x minus 9y plus 5z, that's a z, not a k, equals 15, which they're not exactly the same, but they are equivalent. One is a multiple of negative 1 of the other. Okay. Um, you can also find the area of a parallelogram determined by two vectors by using the dot product. So if you have your sides as vectors and you know your angle in the middle, or you actually you don't even know the angle in the middle, you don't need the angle in the middle. And what we're going to do is that the area for a parallelogram is base times height. And it's awesome, I have my base, my base is the magnitude of w, but I need my height. And if I think about this triangle right here, I know from my trigonometry that sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of vector v. And so my height is the magnitude of v sine of theta. And when I come down here and I replace h with the magnitude of v sine of theta, hopefully you recognize this right here as being the magnitude of my cross product, right? The cross product has an additional unit vector in the direction that we're going, which we don't really care about, because all I care about is the magnitude. And again, with, with magnitude, it doesn't matter if I do w cross v or v cross w. It matters as far as vectors go, but as far as their length, the length entirely comes from the magnitude of w, the magnitude of v, and sine of theta. So the area of a parallelogram is the magnitude of w cross v, or v cross w. doesn't matter. So let's try that out. Oops, not here. So I want the area of the parallelogram formed by the vectors of k and 5i plus 4j minus k. So my two vectors can be given as 0, 0, 1, and then 5, 4, negative 1. And what I want is to do the cross product and then find the magnitude of the cross product. So I'm going to do my cross product, and my i component is 0 minus 4, negative 4i, and then I have, um, let's see, 0 minus 5, negative 5, j, oops, is that negative, but then I have to take the opposite of that, so that's going to be a 5j, and uh, 0 minus 0, so 0k. Right, so there's my components, and then if I want the magnitude, so the vector is negative 4, 5, 0, and if I want the magnitude, I take the square root of 4, negative 4 squared, Oops, plus the square root of 5 squared. And I'm going to get the square root of 41. And that is the area of the parallelogram. Because I just want the magnitude of this cross product vector. Area of a triangle, then, if you think about a parallelogram or at any triangle, is half of the area of a parallelogram. So the area of a triangle, if this is my v and this is my w, the area of the triangle is going to be 1 half w cross 
v, the magnitude of that. So not the, the cross product itself, which is a vector, but the magnitude of the cross product. And here we have our last application. So we're going to find a ve vector parallel to the intersection of the planes 2x plus y plus z equals 52 and 5x minus 3y plus 2z equals 1,000. So if you think of this right here, this is one of my planes right there. And then it has a normal vector right there. So that vector, and for if let's assume that this is my first one, that normal vector comes from the coefficients on x, y, and z. So that's that normal vector. I'm going to think about my other plane right here. It has this normal vector. And its normal vector comes from the coefficients of its equation. And when I cross these two vectors, so they make a plane, and when I cross them, the normal vector is going to point, if I do n1 cross n2, let's try that, then it's going to point out, yep, right here towards me. Okay, and if I did n2 cross n1, I would point the other direction, but I still would get a parallel vector parallel to the intersection of those two planes. So let's try that. So I'm going to cross n1 and n2. And again, here's my vectors, 2, 1, 1, and then 5, negative 3, 2. And so I remove my i component and my i determinant. The determinant of what's left besides the i is 2 minus negative 3, which is 5 in the i direction. I'm going to take the opposite of the determinant when I eliminate this column and I get 4 minus 5 which is negative 1 so that's going to make this a plus 1 j and then I'm going to add the determinant when I remove the last column and that's going to give me negative 6 minus 5 negative 11 k okay. and so there is my cross product which gives me a vector that is parallel to the intersection of the two planes All right um, then one last thing before we go for your, the problem number 15 in your homework you need to come up with some things or you should use some things such as dot product, u dot v, you should know that is the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine of theta. And the cross product is something very similar. It's the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times sine of theta and then times the unit vector. So this guy is a vector. This one is a scalar. But if I think of just this part right there, because this is a unit vector. So it doesn't add length. Its length is 1. And so the magnitude of u cross v is just my magnitude of u, magnitude of v sine theta. And so if I think about my very top equation, I can turn this into cosine of theta is u dot v over the magnitude of u magnitude of v and I can think from right here that sine of theta is the magnitude of u cross v divided by the magnitude of u magnitude of v and then what would that do for tangent of theta which is sine of theta over cosine of theta. So use those facts and see if you can come up with some expression for tangent of theta, and that should help with number 15. Hopefully you have enough to do your mastery.